Uh, all right, so I thought I'd do a quick video um, of some of the progress on the Charles Martel. Obviously, there's a lot of work that I still need to do on the superstructure and it, basically everything above the deck. Some tweaking will need to be done on some of the guns, but they're pretty close. What I've mostly been working on is getting the whole print ready, so getting basically all the tolerances, all the, uh, the support features. For instance, I've got the front torpedo tube here, I've got the aft torpedo tube, I've got um, stuffing boxes and uh, shafts and spreaders here. The spreaders are a bit thicker than what they really are in real life, or at least in the designs I have, but uh, they're functional, and so they need to be a little beefier, since this is an RC model. I'm going to take off some of the uh, some of the things here. I'm take out the masts, the stacks, superstructure. Taking off the deck, and let's see here, all the guns here. And this will give you a bit better view of what's going on inside. I've got two uh, 540 uh, motors in there. And here you've got an Arduino Mega 250 that will be running the steppers for each of the individual turrets. So the turrets will be able to turn uh, individually. And it'll, I think they've got 12 of them in here, which is just about what an Arduino can possibly handle. It can maybe do a little bit more, but um, that's going to be enough for, for this boat. Uh, if I put in back the... Uh, the gun groups here, you can see that each one is zoom in, there we go. You can, oops, you can see that each one will sit down into the, the actual stepper as its lower pivot, and so when the stepper drives it uh, to the left or to the right, the turn will turn. Um, another thing that you might notice in here is all these kind of weird things that are hanging out on the inside here. Uh, like this and this and what these are these are basically clamping tabs uh, and I'll get you a better view of them here in a second let's take a look here alright so this is a this is a pretty good view of it alright so I've got different hole sections and where two sections meet I've got these these tabs they're angled like this so that it can be printed either um, where it's laying on the bed flat and going up or if this is at the top of the print, it can, it's can it got a nice ramp up. It's not just hanging out in the middle of nowhere. Um, the way I've got these things kind of coped um, does allow basically a, a straight out hang here to be printed. It's not perfect, but it's really good, at least for my purposes. So a little plastic clamp that I print out will go into each one. It'll help uh, locate the whole there tends to be a little bit of warping sometimes, but essentially uh, I really need the, the clamping pressure and this gives it to me. If I need to, I can even uh, put a clamp in here that has a hole drilled in and I can use a machine screw to, to lock it in really tight. I don't normally have to do that. Um, on the top here on the, on the rail that sits underneath the deck, I've got a lot of little holes. These are for heat inserts or heat certs. Uh, as they're sometimes called, basically it's just a, a copper threaded insert that you melt in using like a uh, uh, soldering iron is what I use with a kind of a tapered tip or a straight tip. And once you do that, then you can take a machine screw and screw down into uh, into those uh, those inserts, and you can lock the uh, the deck down pretty good so still a uh, fair amount of work to do on the outside on the inside let me take the uh, the deck away and the guns on the inside uh, I think I'm ready to print there's a few things I gotta just double check um, printing something and then realizing that your tolerance is out uh, or there's a misalignment or something like that is very frustrating considering that each section can be pretty big. So if I 
down and we take out the main guns. Where are they? Oh, sorry, the steppers. And I'll take out the the motors. At least for now. Okay. Don't mind that. That's just a torpedo tube. All right. That would be the first section right here that I would print. And uh, that's not a small piece at all. If I make a construction plane, I can just roughly tell you, okay, it's 213 millimeters. Some of the other ones are a bit larger. Oh, it's going to spin here for a second. All right. Some of the other ones. This is a much larger one. I can even just check that real quick. That one's 285. The max I can do on my printer is about 380. But I did chop this into smaller ones for a couple of reasons. Um, where the splits happen, I have to be real careful. Uh, because I might need to put a little bit of support, like on this one here. This is actually not a great idea. Um, anytime you have something that actually curves back out here, um, you're actually going to be printing out here kind of in space. Um, and that's not good. The printer won't have any problems doing a short, um, basically horizontal print. It prints in the uh, the vertical position, so it, with the nose pointed up. Short ones like this, no problem. It can bridge that. Small little round ones that are hanging out in the air here can be a problem. So, I'll, so for some orientations, I'm going to need to actually put in uh, some support. I might actually model that in and just carve it out later, versus having the uh, the slicer do it. All right, so I am. What I'm going to be doing is printing out the entire hole piece by piece. It's going to take me probably about a month to do it. So after that's done, then I'll um, I'll come back to the boards and post something, kind of showing you what the what the hole looks like, and I'll be able to demonstrate some of the things that I I do to prep the hole. It's basically sanding down. Uh, everything to make sure that it's nice and smooth, looks good, uh, and then I'll be printing out the components that then get inserted into the various slots, and so that'll kind of be the, the physical build log that I do. So thanks for checking out this video.